fucking hall. I don't even have any supplies. Oh. Welcome back to What You Turn. I'm Jordan, and today we're going to be looking at the bare essential painting supplies with some extras of what you need to get started painting your own miniatures. From my own personal research, no experience. Let's get started. Welcome back to What Your Turn, I'm Jordan, and today we're going to be going over the basic, bare essential supplies you need to get started painting your own miniatures for under $100. So as you see here, I have some top secret supplies that we're going to be going through. So there's going to be a mix of different products and we're going to go over the benefits and their uses and why you would need them to get started painting your own miniatures. And so remember, I haven't actually painted a single miniature in my life, and this is all based off internet research and what's commonly used in a bunch of different videos that I've seen uh, for myself. So this is just my personal selection of goods that I want to use for miniature painting. Uh, and some of these things may be simply extra. If you want to sink in a couple extra dollars to make painting a little bit easier or to get a very specific shade or color that you want to produce in your figurines, then I will also clearly indicate which of these are optional. So let's get started with the first uh, bare essential, and that is paintbrushes. And so as you may see right here, these are just normal paintbrushes that I have in my house. These cost nothing because they have been bought at a previous time, whether it's for a college project or a kindergarten art project that never happened. Uh, they can be trash brushes, you can use them for dry brushing, you can just like treat them however you want. And there are some brushes that you want to treat very well, and there's some brushes that you may use for odd jobs or rough uh, highlights here and there. So pick out any brushes that you have around the house, get them together, make sure they have, you know, relatively small uh, tips, and you can go ahead and abuse them in any way you want. So go ahead and pick those up. Um, these are actually watercolor brushes, I believe, uh, the Princeton. So. Who knows where those came from? And then of course we have our actual official brushes that we want to be painting with. And so these are also Princeton brushes. Actually, huh, that's funny. I didn't even know that I bought the same brand in the past, but these are Princeton paint brushes. And so they are, they come in a pack of five brushes of varying widths. So there's a round one, round two, round six, round four, round three, slash zero, whatever that means. And so you can get these off Amazon for about $10. Um, prices may vary, shipping may vary, but I'm just gonna talk about the price that is on Amazon. And so you might notice I got two sets. And so if you wanna get started and you're just casually starting to paint, go ahead and just get one pack, save the $10. But if you're doing metallics, you're gonna need two sets of brushes. Why? Because metallics will ruin your brushes. And so you want one brush for the normal colors and you want one for the shiny metallics that you'll be working with, potentially put those to the side there. And we have the ever important brush cleaner. So this is one of the extra goods. I'm gonna put basic goods that you need here and I'm gonna put extra goods up here. And so this brush cleaner is called, what's it called actually? The Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. You can also get it off Amazon very easily. And so this is the Masters Brush Cleaner. It comes in a very small jar. I haven't actually ever opened it yet, oof. So there you have, it's kind of like this wax, waxy substance, and you basically just dip your brushes in here after you use them, after you wash them, and it'll help them retain the sharpness of their tips. And so that's only if you're really serious about painting. This is about seven, eight dollars on Amazon, and this will help your brushes last longer. So if you love your brushes, you love working with them, you want them to last as long as possible, this is what you need to get. I just decided to get it because I know I'll be painting in the long term, so I went ahead and made the investment, but that's up to you whether you really want to take the dive. But I, I didn't know this growing up, I just like do whatever with my brush dip them, get paint all over the, the metal part, which is a big no-no. But if you want your brushes to last, there's a way to do it, and it typically involves being very gentle with them, not getting paint on the metal parts of your brushes, and using this. And so this comes highly recommended if you intend to be painting in the long term and you want your brushes to last. Uh, improper treatment of your brushes, including getting paint on the metal part, like I've been saying over and over and over again, will cause the brush ends to split and cause the tip, which is extremely sharp. So if you get a nice close view, 
And so you see how sharp those tips are right there. And that's where all the details are gonna come in on your miniatures. You really wanna preserve that sharpness. That is invaluable. That's These are the kind of brushes you want. You don't want flat brushes like this one or this one. These ones are kind of round and they don't have the necessary sharp tips that you, you would want for your uh, painting. So you definitely want something sharp. And so these Princeton ones come very highly recommended. You can get more expensive like Citadel brushes, but those come at about $10 a brush. And so these ones come in a set of five for about $10. So it's a really good value in my opinion. Uh, trash brushes stay trash and brush cleaner is a brush cleaner. So now we're gonna move on to our first package. Don't look at my address. <laughs> and so I don't even know what this is. So let's go ahead and snip snap. All right, and so what do we have here? We have some paints. And so I believe this falls into the optional paint area. And so I actually imagine that these would be a little bit larger, but you know, for the price that I got them for, it's actually not too surprising. So I got some Citadel paints right here. And so the major paints you wanna go for, it sounds like it's either Vallejo or Citadel paints. Citadel has some problems with the consistency. Some of the whites can be a little bit clumpy based on some Amazon reviews that I read, not from personal experience, thank goodness. But a lot of their paints come very highly recommended. And so the one of highest recommendation, of course, is Nuln Oil. So this is, I've seen it basically used everywhere. This is a staple wash. And so a wash basically, it's called talent in a bottle in which it will kind of seep into the crevices of your miniatures and create that shadow pop and allow the details to really be visible. Otherwise the recesses or the cracks or the crevices of your miniature will get just washed over or overlooked by the other more bright paint. So this adds a little bit of shadow in the folds of the miniature. I don't have any examples to show you right now because I just got these, but this you really need to get. So this is about $7 for this small bottle. And so like just scale reference against my head, it is pretty tiny, um, all things considered, but you don't have to use that much of it. You can either water it down. One drop goes a long way. So let me just show it to you one more time. This is gold. As, as far as I know, everyone uses it and you should definitely invest in it um, if you're gonna be painting miniatures seriously. So remember the name. These are a couple extra paints that I went ahead and invested in. This is a Grax Earthshade, also by Citadel. This is basically a another wash. You can see how liquidy it is, just like the Nuln Oil. And essentially what this is, is kind of a dirty, like rock, wash so it's not like a black shadow but it's more of a brown dirt and filth kind of grime kind of wash so it adds more of a dirty kind of detail a rocky kind of rough uh wash to it and i you know i just you know i got a good deal on it so this was about four or five dollars and each of these paints are about you know none of them go over like seven dollars so but they do kind of add up as you get more and more of them, of course. So just wanted to invest in that just for fun, just to see how that works, especially when you're doing bases of miniatures. I really wanted to see what I could do with that. So I went with that too. And um, this is again, this is purely um, optional, but this is Lead Belcher. So this is another Citadel paint. So this is another Citadel paint. It's a metallic, definitely a lot thicker, not liquidy at all. I just wanted a couple different metallics to be able to work with, and this was a popular choice. So I went ahead and went with this one. This one is about $5, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, $5, $4.86. So again, these are optional, so I'm putting them here. These are necessary. So paintbrushes, eh, cleaner. Cleaner's kind of actually more, you know, non-essential. So definitely you need a wash and now let's hopefully get some of our colors. I think this is the major uh, shipment that I got in terms of colors. So a lot of people recommend that you don't get a full set when you're buying miniature paints and say you just pick and choose what colors you want. But you know, I, I didn't want to deal with you know picking and choosing because there are so many colors out there and there's so many choices and so many brands at that. And the individual shipping of every single bottle just seemed a little bit absurd to me. So I just went ahead and got, ooh, ooh and there's one more in here. So I went ahead and got the whole Vallejo acrylic color set. 
Let's go ahead and actually look at what's in here. So this is about $45. So this is the most expensive thing that you may want, but we're trying to stay under $100. If you're trying to get really essential colors, I mean, each of these bottles is probably about maybe three, four bucks, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 bottles in here. So 16 times four is already $64. And so getting this for $45 off Amazon is actually feels like a good deal. It feels like, you know, that was a good investment for me. So let's go ahead and see what's in here. They have blue, green, royal blue, royal purple, amaranth, which is like an orange. This is the medieval color set actually. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. And so you have a lot of choices to work with. And I figured just starting out, this would give me basically all the colors I, I need, which, and I'm trying to do like medieval kind of darker themes, darker paints. So we'll see what we can actually do with this. But for $45, I thought that was a worthy investment for me. And I'm gonna put that under essential. You could mix your own paints and you'd only need like your basic primaries. But for me, just getting started, I think it'd be nice to have a couple different options to choose from. So I went with this. It might've been a bit of an investment, but I enjoyed that. This one, I saw this on King of Average. This is the Vallejo Flesh, uh, flesh color. What is it called? Basic skin tone. So this is your basic uh, <laughs> Caucasian skin tone in a bottle, and I really liked how this came out on his um, on his painting of what was it? what was that guy that Titan from Aeon Trespass Odyssey Hephaestus or whatever his name was. And so I really liked how that turned out. So I wanted a single good solid flesh tone, which you can actually use with the Agrax Earthshade to make it a little bit more dirty and a little bit more natural. So I really like that. Really excited to use this one. This is this was another kind of personal pick. It looks like in here they have some colors that are similar to skin tone, if not a little bit more brown or a little bit orangish. So I, I figured this was this was a good thing to have. And of course, using this you can mix in like browns and tans to cover basically all the races instead of just white. So I like this and I thought this was a good place to start in terms of skin. So we'll see how that works out. So I'm gonna put that under essential. You don't wanna to have to mix your own skin colors every single time from primary and secondary colors. So I thought that was really important. And so this was a flat $5 actually for a nice solid skin tone that I liked a lot. This is probably not what you're gonna to wanna to do for the most part if you wanna save money. If you wanna save money, pick and choose your colors wisely and you don't have to deal with all the, the whole package. But they, they make it and had a bunch of colors that I wanted to use, including the metallics. I really like the metallic colors and how those pop out on miniatures, as well as a bunch of other smatterings. But I'll probably only be using maybe half of these colors, I'm predicting. All right, so next one. So what is this? This is a flesh wash. Oh, okay. So <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I really like these washes. Um, the Nolan Oil, the Agrax Earthshade, and now this is the flesh wash. I could use either this or the Agrax Earthshade. Looking at it, it does look very similar to the Agrax Earthshade. This can be used effectively to give basically flesh a more natural appearance. So that's another reason why I went ahead and got this one. In addition, flesh wash by Kemi. I don't really, hmm. Well, all right, well, I, uh, I forgot what my past self was thinking, but definitely non-essential. And so this comes, comes in for about $3. And so it's very funny how these prices add up. But um, again, non-essential, putting that to the side. And then we still have a couple more packages to go through. Okay, wow, this is a lot smaller than I actually imagined. Miniatures always seem a lot larger when people take pictures really close up. And so this is actually a painting handle. Uh, <laughs> I'm all in, man. And so this is essentially a... <laughs> this is probably the, the geekiest, nerdiest thing I've ever owned in my life at this point. And so this actually prevents you from, I don't know, getting carpal tunnel syndrome essentially, and it um, allows you to, to hold your miniatures comfortably. So, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> I'll try painting them without it, but I mean, you obviously can use your own, like, basically you can just take any sort of stick or wooden thing and put like some silly putty on top to hold the miniature, but this actually allows you to clamp it in right there. And so it feels, it, fe <laughs> it feels comfortable. So, uh, I mean, 
<laughs> Definitely not necessary. This is another $10. Just kind of a luxury upgrade of painting, but I haven't painted anything yet. So this is, this is kind of me just pressuring myself to paint something really nice for all of you. And then our final package, largest box at that. Oops. And that, of course, is our primer. And so I actually, I forgot to get the, the final varnish. I, uh, definitely my mistake. But this is our gray primer. I decided to just go with the most neutral primer that I could find. And by far one of the cheapest things you can get and most essential purchases, which is just plain primer for about $3. And so that's really all you need. You just need primer to get started. This allows the paint to actually stick to your miniature. You need colors to paint. You need paint brushes to apply that paint and a good wash. And so in total, what you actually need to paint is a primer, $3, Nuln oil, a good wash to just, you know, make the details pop, so that's 10, a good flesh tone, which is another five, some paint brushes, and so now we're at what, 10, 15, 25, and then a good selection of colors, which is a pushes it up to a total of $70, which is very manageable. If you're starting to get deeper into painting, you can go ahead and get a handle. It does feel nice. I mean, perhaps my uh, wrist will thank me later. And this adds, a, what, $10 maybe. If you really want some additional washes, these are truly non-essential. But as you're getting more serious, definitely this Master's Brush Cleaner, which is another $7. So you can even include these for, and it'll still be around, uh, what, 80 $87 and maybe even another set of brushes and that's 97 so that's that's your painting supply for under a hundred dollars primer two sets of brushes a flesh color null oil a handle some cleaner and a set of Vallejo colors to choose from and so the last thing I want to throw in is I totally forgot to get a finished varnish and so a varnish is, is very important to actually protect your miniatures and prevent them from being damaged after you painted them. You don't want your paint job to get chipped or damaged. And so that is the one last thing I totally forgot, which you can get for another $5. And that is darn near essential to be included in your painting uh, collection. So that is my paint haul for under $100, and I hope you enjoyed it. And so that's the whole haul, um, and I am i don't know if I want to do painting videos. I think King of Average has that pretty much covered, but I might make a couple videos just to show how amateurish I am at this whole painting deal and this whole hobby in general. So I just thought it was appropriate to go ahead and you know, just give this part of the hobby a try for my and your enjoyment. So if you like these kinds of unboxings and kind of product selection videos, please be sure to like and subscribe and support the channel. And if you really like my videos, please be sure to check out my Patreon down below if you want a little bit more wait your turn. So on my Patreon, I put additional videos, I put additional bloopers and additional bonus footage on that medium. So if you want to check that out, that's in the link below. I'm Jordan, you're watching Wait Your Turn. Thank you for waiting, and now it's your turn. And so lastly, if you're interested in starting to paint miniatures for yourself, I've included a series of links regarding these products that I bought off Amazon down below in the link. And if you use any of those Amazon associate links that I put down in the description below, I'll actually receive a commission off your purchase. So what better way to start your miniature painting collection and support the channel at the same time? It's a win-win. So if um, you're interested in any of these products, whether it's the Princeton brushes, the various Citadel or Vallejo hope paints you can go ahead I've provided the descriptions down below and you too can get started on your own miniature painting hobby so once again this is Jordan this is wait your turn thank you for watching and thank you for your consideration and participation on wait your turn thank you for watching thank you for waiting and now it's your turn